Hello everybody, this is Bud and um, on the screen here I have three GTK applications and one terminal window. Uh, this is LeafPad with a 3 instead of an E, so that's the GTK 3 version of LeafPad and this is the GTK 2 original version of LeafPad and this is LX Task. Um, they are all applications I use quite regularly uh, actually. Um, or I guess I actually use the GTK3 version of, of uh, LeafPad uh, because I think the font rendering is slightly better, but you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, and they all share something, um, share an annoying um, thing, but I will show you how to fix it in this video. And that annoying thing is that you cannot hide the menu bar of uh, these windows. There are no options for hiding the menu bar. It's always visible. And and sure, and, and the menu bar is actually quite useful in LX task here. It's it's like a good way to set, um, yeah, filter what, what to show here and stuff like that. Preference window is extremely useless <laughs> on, on LX task. But a useful this menu at least the view menu is useful. On on um, LeafPad, the menus are quite useless if you ask me. You you I, I use them to set the font like once. Whoops, that opened up in on the other workspace there. But whatever. You might open the the font setting options. Set the font. When you have done that, you never need to open the options again in, in, in these applications. And that means that the menu bar is like completely bloat to me uh, in, in these applications 99% of the time. But there is a way to hide the menu bar. You just do this. Hide. Please hide. Hide you menu bar. Easy. Easy. Just press a key binding. Secret key binding, but this will not work for for you if you try this. The key binding, by the way, was Control Alt M in all three applications here. Um, and the way I am able to do this is because I'm using a custom GTK uh, module, and I actually made a repository for this uh, module on um, GitHub. I will talk a bit about the, the history of, of it and how to use it, install it and whatnot. So GitHub GTK lib win menu. Search for that on GitHub and you should find this. You can also I will try to add a link in the show notes uh, to this repository here, but as you can see it's hosted on my uh, GitHub here, Budrich. But um, I am not the original author of this. Um, yeah, we can start with that. Credits. Libwin menu C is based on the AUR packages GTK2 Libwin menu and GTK3 Libwin menu, which in turn is based on uh, post at the Linux org RU forums. Um, and it looks like that post is based on the old GNOME 2 extension GNOME 2 global menu. That is not really true. And we can also open this link. Also, notice here that the yeah, these are just links here, you know, but here for some reason, why Budrich have you hard put the link inside a code block like this on, on GitHub? Well, it's because GitHub doesn't render links with a Russian top le uh, level domain. So if you put a, a link to a Russian site in your markdown document, uh, GitHub will simply not render that link. <laughs> it's it's so ridiculous so i cannot really um i have to do it like this but here we have that russian forum but i guess it all started uh with me finding this um uh, little package on AUR. i did so it it's uh, quite a while ago maybe two years ago or something i was searching for something on AUR like menu and then this came up in the search results so it was just by chance, and that's one reason I really like AR so much, is you find all these weird uh, things uh, all the time. Um, 
And when I saw that in the search results, I opened this AR web, web page because that's what I uh, usually did uh, with AR uh, to verify like the, the source of, of programs and stuff like that. Uh, and here, this really uh, jumped out, out to me that uh, the upstream URL was just a link to some Russian Linux forum. And that is what we opened here. Um, also, if you look at the package build for these uh, uh, AR packages, you will see that it never downloads anything from those forums. Instead, it has, um, it has everything. I wonder what this is. Well, this works. Uh, all the files are included in the AR package here. So here is the source code uh, for the program, and it even has a custom make file here with just a single uh, goal like this. So it's easy to verify what what this is about. Um, I remember when I originally found this like two years ago. Then. Uh, on this forum, this link used to work. So this this is a link to a paste bin, uh, but the content is now uh, gone. So we don't uh, we don't have the original source for it. The closest is this uh, AR package here. Um, we can also do this because I don't uh, read Russian uh, Cyrillic alphabet. So let's translate this page. There. Um, so this forum thread is about GNOME global menu in Firefox 3. This is very old, This or very old, it's, it's uh, from 2010, this uh, uh, thread. So this is 12 year, years old, uh, and it's about uh, an extension for uh, um, GNOME global menu, which was like an extension for GNOME 2 to give you... Um, a similar experience as you get on macOS, where applications don't display menu bars of their own. Instead, all menus are displayed in like a common place in in, in the taskbar, basically like this. So here we can see that Firefox is focused, and then it have the Firefox menu. And if you would focus a different program, then that uh, program menu would be displayed in the global menu here. That is something that macOS has been doing since. Um, I wonder if it isn't si since the early Macintosh uh, days. They they have been using that uh, design, and I, I actually think that's that's a good design because it's. Um, yeah, you get rid of all the menu bars, but you don't get rid of the menus anyway, so you still retain them. I, I think it's a good solution to, to that problem. Uh, and you never uh, have these issues with annoying menus like we had here, you know. Um, but it's only on Mac they do this. Do this. Uh, it was, I guess, possible here back in the GNOME 2 days to get something similar working on uh, Linux, especially if you were using exclusively GTK applications and, and the GNOME 2 and stuff like that. I think you could actually get this working more or less uh, um, consistent. But nowadays it's very difficult to, to do so uh, because applications come from all kinds of sources and I... I I guess this stuff simply doesn't work with flat packs and stuff like that. Then you would have to do some really advanced uh, uh, XDG portal hackery to get something like this working. And still, you would never get a good consistent behavior. Uh, especially when you count in if you are using Qt applications as well. And GTK4, GTK5, I don't even think they support menu bars at all. So it would not work there either. So. This is something you never see on Linux anymore. Uh, but uh, that is probably what this, or that is what this thread is about. Um, uh, 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 this uh, global menu, and I guess uh, Mr. Death here, who is the original author of the program that we are talking about in this video, uh, he made like a short script and, and it it is the same thing as we have on AR here as I mentioned uh, this libwin menu C so this program if you compile this you will get a single uh, GTK module that when used it will just hide the menu bar and it will also toggle the menu on alt M and control M 
and that is easy to verify here in the source code here we have the uh, key bindings declared so um, m and GD gdk control mask and gdk mod one mask so there are two key key bindings for toggling the menu in the original one here but if we look closely at the package build um, we will see that they actually patch uh, patch the source with two patches here and one of them um, changes the key bindings here so it changes the key bindings to use uh, right control key instead of uh, control M and alt M not sure why they do this um, but um, yeah this is just a weird <laughs> a really weird key binding to simply just press right control to to toggle the menu but this works if you want wanted it want to use that um, okay and I, when I found this and verified uh, that everything was uh, <laughs> like uh, not so strange uh, 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 malware I was compiling and, and installing um, and verified that this was working I did that a couple of years ago and then I I have been using it ever since so and I immediately missed this when I um, came here to Seuss the tumbleweed which I'm using now you know um, because we don't have AR on, on tumbleweed so I thought why not uh, make a proper repository out of this um, on github uh, with this uh, little code and I also went ahead and made some small modifications to it one is that I yet again changed key binding here uh, to use control alt m as the single key binding to toggle the menu I think this is better uh, to use like double modifiers here because then you can more or less be sure that it never clashes with a built-in key binding but um, it's very easy to, to configure this if you wanted to uh, another thing I did was add these lines here and that makes this um, uh, source here I should also remove the copyright here and the SPDX license that I identifier here need to do that uh, whatever I added these lines here and that makes it possible to build um, the module for GTK, GTK 3 support uh, as well because the original one here uh, that is for GTK 2 uh, and it is actually only a couple of three lines here basically that's needed for it to be compatible with GTK 3 so I added those um, and that also means like uh, uh, AR here there are two separate packages one for uh, GTK 2 and one for GTK 3 uh, here if you use my version then um, the make file will uh, compile and install uh, two versions for you automatically so you don't have to keep track of two different packages or whatever um, <clears throat> but that's the only thing I, I have changed there uh, I also added that stupid license header thing there which I will remove because I was really confused about how to uh, specify the license for this because the original uh, code is missing and I thought that I could use GPL2 because uh, that is what this uh, GNOME extension uh, the Glo GNOME2 global menu is using GPL2 but it isn't really based on that this is like a completely free <laughs> free independent little code snippet that Mr. Death has done um, I think I say I think because maybe it's not Mr. Death who is the original uh, uh, author but I think so or no here the module was written by some local good anonymous I tweaked it a bit and added a white sheet of applications yeah there's a whitelist Okay, so it's it's actually not Mr. Death, then I guess I should change that as well. The thing is, I just uh, realized I could translate this pa page. I have uh, uh, So most of the information here on, on the GitHub is me guessing what that uh, thread is about here in the credits se section and stuff like that. Yeah, so I, okay, so Mr. Death and Good Anonymous uh, is um, local Good Anonymous. Okay. To install this, clone the repository and then uh, make and set the variable or 
make macro uh, to uh, lib dir here. Uh, this variable needs to match where your libraries are located on, on, on your system. Uh, I noticed this is different on Arch and OpenSUSE. So on, on OpenSUSE it's um, usr slash lib64 and on Arch it's just lib and it might be local lib or usr local lib on other distributions and operating systems and and so on so you have to just figure out where where to um what this lib directory is and set this macro uh, for it to install it properly um wait now wait now it feels like the instructions there are wrong also Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, the instructions here is actually wrong. The, the, this should actually be here. So when you make install, that's when it's uh, mm, 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 important that this is set. So, um, yeah. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's fix it in real time. I, this is actually take five or something of this video. I, I've done so many versions of this. I'm never satisfied with the result. And today I just thought, let's just try to make this. Um, let's do this. Question mark. Local good anonymous. Let's just remove this. That. There. Okay, that's fine. Um, do this. change this 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 There. All right, all right. So now we should have an updated readme here. Yes, so this is the correct uh, uh, way to install it. Now we also have that stuff removed there, good. And the credits look like this, local good anonymous. Um, <clears throat> when it is installed properly, then you just use it like this. As you can see here, this is how I started uh, Leafpad 3 here. We can bring that to workspace 1 and close it, just so you see, there. So, to, to enable the module, you just say gtk underscore modules is equal to win menu. Because this will install itself as a lib win menu in the gtk modules uh, directory. 
And here, this is GTK3. You, you don't have to uh, keep track of, of that. It, it have the same name and same uh, environment variable thing here for both GTK2 and GTK3. So uh, this will work. GTK3, control alt M. Can toggle the menu. GTK2 works, can toggle the menu. Uh, start it without this, leaf pad. Then it always starts with the menu, and now we cannot toggle the menu. So that, that's how it works. It's super simple, but uh, known issues might not work properly with all applications. Uh, hence, not recommended to apply this globally. If you wanted to, you could apply it globally, but as I just said, don't do that. I don't recommend it. Um, but if you put this in, in like your init script in, for example, xinitrc or maybe bashrc or something like that, where you export uh, environment variables, you could export uh, this environment variable with win menu. But don't do that. Uh, it's because there are some applications I have noticed where this actually um, doesn't work well. Um, there is, uh, yeah, as we could see here, uh, I think that is what Mr. Death is saying here, that he added a whitelist to the source code. I have been thinking about removing this actually, but uh, there is a whitelist with these applications in the source code. So it will never um, do this if, if it's GNOME Terminal, GIMP 2.10, which whatever, Mousepad, which is XFCE's version of uh, Leafpad. Uh, I haven't verified that it is broken there, but uh, it probably is. And a render, which I think is added here in the GTK3 libwin menu uh, uh, package build here. Yeah, here they add that to the to the um, <clears throat> to to the whitelist as well. Um, so those applications, it probably doesn't work, but I have noticed at least two other applications i just haven't added them to this whitelist thing because i think they are quite rare applications but i can mention which one uh, i i am talking about one is the text editor text adept uh, text adept is a text editor uh, that uh, is cross-platform but on linux is you it uses gtk2 to render the the ui and when you enable this uh, win menu module with text adept it will work it will start the application the menu bar is not visible but when you trigger the hotkey it uh, crashes the application i remember that was uh, what happened when i tried this this is a long time ago i don't have it installed now because i don't want to build this from source it's not available in the SUSE repositories and blah 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 but I, I remember it didn't work with that. And, and the other application was also a text editor that is called Sublime Text 2. It works with Sublime Text 3 and later, but Sublime Text 2, um, there were some weird uh, uh, behavior when I tried this. It, uh, it, same thing as with uh, text adapt, it started the application without a menu, but as soon as you toggle the menu, you got a like a gray bar at the where the menu used to be uh, some graphical glitchy artifact but as soon as you resize the window the gray bar disappeared so it was kind of uh, usable anyways but it was a bit buggy and I, I just imagine that there are many more applications where it might actually cause issues like that uh, but I of course haven't verified all applications out there i use this for three different applications myself so leafpad being one of them uh, and lx task as we can see here which is my preferred uh, task manager guy you just do it the same way gtk modules lx task boink and then it opens like this and you can toggle the menu because you cannot cannot change that setting uh, otherwise i also use it for uh, pidgin but i don't want to open pidgin because it's uh, it uh, it just docks a lot of my personal account uh, information and stuff like that so let's just imagine that i i use this for pidgin can verify it if we edit application here we can see that i have set the um, 
the command for this desktop file to to include this. Do this so we can see the whole line. Uh, and GTK modules equals win menu and then the command here. So this is how you would add it uh, if you want to use this with desktop files. And this is also how you can use it in i3 um, for for key bindings. So I guess we can do this close that guy whoops not you go here and then press this key and if i press my key binding ah that's right make it floating and then Control shift escape here you can see the command uh, that was used to, to start lx task here i3 run instance lx task and then the command gtk modules win menu lx task that's how you can use it with i3 or other key binding uh, uh, um, applications. The reason I popped up out the window here is because uh, they they uh, they uh, these two applications occupy the same container, so we wouldn't be able to see the command there if I would do this, you know. Um, so yeah. That's that's what this video was. Uh, me talking about GTK lib win menu thing here. Only reason I created this repository was so I could have easy access to this uh, in case the AER packages goes away. Also, then this code is lost forever. Um, so that's I guess good. And also it makes it easy to install this on other distributions uh, because I since I'm not using Arch as you know. Um, so that's why I did this. And now I'm sharing this information with you. Maybe you have this, have had this annoyance yourself, um, not um, being able to toggle the menu. I think it makes a big difference. It, it just looks a lot cleaner when you don't have to see. You see, I don't have a menu on any of my windows here. I, I usually find them annoying. But with that said, I also think that menu bars is, it's not a bad UI, um, element and not bad design you know to, to have a menu uh, especially for com complex applications like uh, sublime here for example it have lots and lots and lots of things here in the menu bar and it's a good way to discover and uh, fire commands so you don't have to remember all key bindings and stuff like that but most of the time you don't need to use the menu bar and then it's better if it's not visible in my opinion and then if you just toggle it when you need it and I tried to use this Control alt m even in applications that aren't uh, launched with this uh, thing. In Sublime here, I have the same key binding, so I get a consistent behavior for it. Um, there are some uh, GDK applications, for example Thunar, which have this um, built in by default, and then you don't need to use this. Uh, Thunar has it here, you can toggle the menu bar from the <laughs> menu bar. Uh, I haven't changed the key binding to control alt m which is what what i prefer to have it as i just mentioned but there's no need to use this module with thunar here for example that's another reason why it's just stupid to, to enable this globally um, since many applications have this uh, functionality already another application like this is Gyalculator. Uh, where you can toggle the menu by right clicking anywhere in the ui show menu bar but you also have it on a key binding here Control m so you can do that uh, but you could still use it with for example calculator here uh, if we do that now no menu bar but now i can toggle the menu bar with the same key binding Control alt m even if um, the actual key binding here is Control m uh, using this module you will always have that control alt m key binding so i guess that's one reason why you uh, uh, maybe want to use this for a lot of applications that already have have the functionality because i i don't know if you know but uh, gtk applications is extremely inconvenient most of the time to change the key bindings uh, i think thunar is getting better here now um, yeah, maybe we can fix that here. Shortcuts, window, status bar, list view. They should add a search here to the key binding. Okay, let's see if we can spot it. Menu, control M.
There it is. Control Alt M. Close and now Control Alt M. Yes. Nice, nice, nice. That's very nice. Mm. Yeah, I should mention that because that is like on topic here that the GTK 3 version of the AUR package it actually installs a shell script also. Um, if we look at the package build, so here install win menu sh into this directory etc x11 xinit xinitrc.d it installs a shell script and that shell script does this it exports the gtk modules here i guess i should also add it like this in my readme because this is the proper way to do this in case you would have more gtk modules this yeah that's good Make a note about that. Uh, but this shell script here, it, it actually sets this as a global uh, uh, environment variable now to, to use this win menu. So be aware of that if you install the GTK3 version of this uh, 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 package. It will actually uh, uh, make this a global setting if you are sourcing these files with your xinit uh, uh, RC script. Which you probably do. That I think that is a default um, and recommended thing to do, because there are usually some, um, or there are some some useful uh, things in in this directory that you kind of want to source into your Xinit, and it also makes it so that packages can install files there with like needed environment variables and stuff. So it's very much recommended that you that you do source these files, but as I just mentioned, it is. In my opinion not recommended to set this specific environment variable uh, globally like this so be aware of that in, in in case you are using arch and install this from AR, it will uh, actually apply this to all um, programs for you now and also use the weird <laughs> write control and stuff like that so what i'm trying to say is i kind of think that my version is is um, um, better <laughs> that uh, because it doesn't um, set this globally it doesn't use that weird write control uh, key binding but that's just details and you could easily uh, configure the, the the package before installing it as well or modify it so yeah that that uh, wraps this thing up um i think it's <laughs> very cool that uh, this thing thing still works you know it's uh, 12 years old and it still works perfectly fine for both gtk2 and gtk3 applications and this also it's also kind of cool that that it works with gtk3 applications this was done before gtk3 was uh, published and everyone was compl has been complaining for the last 10 years you know how GTK3 broke all old behavior and you had to rewrite all scripts and stuff but like this uh, dirt attack just worked with yeah or there is actually three lines that you needed to 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 add to have it uh, working on GTK3 and it is kind of if you look at this how annoying isn't this why couldn't they just kept the original uh, behavior in GTK3. Why why do you have to add these stupid lines for it to work with GTK3? Whatever. Um, have a great day, everybody. Ba 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 ba.